subscribe to our channel and press the bell icon to never miss an update. Join the only official Telegram channel of Rao's IA Study Circle to get relevant material and important updates. Hello everyone and welcome to detailed analysis of the explained section of Indian Express. In this initiative, we take up all those articles which are relevant for your UPSC preparation, however, have not been covered under the DNS initiative. Articles which are put up for today's discussion are listed on your screen and the time stamping for the same is given in the description box. So let us start with the first article itself. So the first article for today's discussion is related to an important space program undertaken by a space agency NASA. This project is part of a larger project where we are as a human race trying to find out the possibility of life on Mars as well as the possibility to have manned mission or a crew mission to Mars and stay there. The article in the Indian Express says that why did Perseverance produce oxygen on Mars? It has simply asked that why we require to produce oxygen. Now by the simple logic or by a simple common sense, oxygen is required for human survival or the survival of an organism. So if we are planning to visit to that planet, we should have enough amount of oxygen to stay there, survive there and come back alive. Apart from this, there is another reason why we require oxygen. This oxygen will also act as an oxidizer or this will also act as a burning agent as far as fuel is concerned in a spacecraft. So oxygen along with hydrogen produce a high amount of energy which can be used in order to run a spacecraft back to Earth from Mars. In this article, what we will discuss is what is Mars exploration mission, why it is undertaken, some of its objectives, a search for the oxygen on the planet, production of oxygen on the planet and a brief about the Mars atmosphere. Well, these are some of the objectives why we are exploring the Mars mission or why we are taking up the Mars mission. The first is to determine if life ever arose on Mars. We are just trying or we are just being curious enough to find out that was there any life on Mars. We are not looking for aliens, we are not looking for Jadu at all. What we are looking is that is there any chance of survival of any kind of organism on that planet. It might be a bacteria, it might be a fungus over there. So this is the kind of objective which we are having right now. We are not looking for any human sized aliens over there. The second objective of the program is to find the characteristics of the climate on Mars. How hot is it? How cold is it? What is the difference between the different latitudes and the longitudes? What is the amount of insulation? So and so forth. So it is like finding out the exact weather and climatical pattern on the entire planet. The third objective is to characterize the geology of the Mars. That is what kind of stones are there? What is the geology? What is the percentage of metamorphic rocks? Is there any sedimentary rocks? or is there any igneous rocks or not, how they are formed, how they are different from place to place and so and so forth. And the last objective is to prepare for a human exploration mission. We have already been to the extraterritorial body which is known as our beloved moon. So now what we are trying is to reach another planet and to send a man to Mars. And for that we require the ample amount of oxygen to breathe to go and to come back alive. Well, these are some of the past missions which have been undertaken in order to understand the planet Mars. It includes all these important orbiter missions. Orbiter mission is nothing but a kind of a satellite that revolves around a planet and cover up all important and relevant information about a particular planet. It includes the kind of temperature is available over there, the weather patterns, the climatical patterns, the distance, the amount of oxygen which is present in the upper atmosphere, so and so forth. The things and the object which you are seeing in the lower part of the picture are nothing but the lander and the rovers. At the end of the day, what we have in a probe mission is a component of three different objects or three different objectives. First being the orbiter, second being the lander and third being the rover. Orbiter is nothing but a kind of satellite which revolves around a planet and collect all the relevant information. Lander is an another instrument which actually goes on to land over a particular celestial body. It may be a moon, it may be other planet. So lander is nothing but an object which goes on to land over a particular planet. And lastly we have rover. 
assume that rover is nothing but a kind of a vehicle so it is a vehicle which has wheel over it so it moves from one place to another it has different energy sources including the solar power it capture images sample soils conduct different kind of experimentation from one place to the other what it does it it collects the information send it to the lander lander on the other hand send it to the orbiter and this orbiter collect this information assemble it and send it back to the planet earth and here we collect all those information and try to conduct experiment based on that these are some of the missions you can see on your screen we will discuss them very briefly to have some basic ideas about them we will start from the opportunity first well this mission was launched in 2003 and 2004 it was just an experimental project which was undertaken to run a rover over this planet so this was the first brave experiment or the first brave initiative in order to run a rover on planet mars so it was nothing more than that it was just an experimental rover which was undertaken curiosity on the other hand was launched in order to study or explore a special crater and the name of that crater is gale this is a crater which is on the planet mars and this curiosity was launched to study the composition of this crater this was launched in november 2011 insight mission of nasa also known as interior exploration using seismic investigation geo odyssey and heat transport well this is the entire name of insight this was launched in mars as a lander as i said it is for, it is not a rover it is just a lander so it stay at a particular place it does not move so insight project does not move this entire object does not move it remained at a stationary position so this was launched in order to study the interior or the seismic activity over the planet mars another important mission given in this photograph is maven maven is a short form for mars atmosphere and volatile evolution it is a spacecraft it is actually a orbiter so it will never land on the planet it will just revolve around the planet and it was developed by nasa to investigate the upper atmosphere and the ionosphere of mars and how does solar winds strip volatile components or compounds from the atmosphere so it has studied the upper atmosphere and the impact of solar winds on the planet mars now in last we will discuss about the perseverance with it is also called with a nickname percy it is a car size like mars rover and it was designed to explore the jazeera crater on the planet mars it is part of nasa's mars mission 2020 and it was manufactured by the jet propulsion laboratory the design of perseverance is almost similar to that of the curiosity and it was just a moderate upgradation over it it carries almost 19 cameras with it including the two microphones now these camera can capture high definition images and we can see the kind of atmosphere or the surrounding which is there on the planet mars apart from these camera and two microphones the important thing which is carried over in this project and which is very important as far as general studies is concerned is a mini helicopter in unity well this is not actually a helicopter to carry a human being it's a very small instrument but this was a first bold initiative by the human race to carry out a flight operation on another planet so this is a very very bold initiative undertaken by the nasa to kind of run a helicopter over the another planet mars 2020 is a mars rover mission forming part of nasa's larger project which is mars exploration program or mep it includes rover perseverance which we have already discussed a small robotic coaxial helicopter ingenuity mars 2020 was launched from the earth on an atlas 5 launch vehicle well we also have launch vehicle in india these are pslv alv gslv many other in the upcoming time the mission will seek sign of habitable conditions on mars in the asian past so it will look for availability of any sign of life of the planet mars and will also search for evidences or the biosignatures of the past microbial life and water so they are not looking for any aliens they are looking for microbial life and traces of water on the planet mars The mass as of now has a very very high percentage of carbon dioxide which is 96%.
in on earth on planet earth we are not able to survive at a small percentage of co2 how can we survive at such a high rate on the other hand the presence of oxygen on the planet is only 0.13% it is not even half a percent or 1% of the entire atmosphere composition it makes it almost impossible to survive on that planet we as a human being does not have that active lungs or a system like a machine that we can utilize such a small amount of oxygen from the atmosphere to survive on the other hand earth has a very high concentration of oxygen which is 21% which is enough to help survival of life and along with that we also have what we know as a greenery or the forest over the earth which are providing the ample amount of oxygen so moxi is the important project part which is working like a tree it inhale the co2 it will inhale actually the co2 over the planet and it will exhale the oxygen altogether to produce that and store for the future missions this is a small fact sheet you can pause the video you can see the comparison between the atmosphere composition between earth and the mars now how perseverance will produce the oxygen on mars how it will produce that well we have already discussed that there is a important instrument which is also known as moxi the real name of moxi is mars oxygen in situ resource utilization experiment what it will do it will produce 5 grams of oxygen from the existing carbon dioxide because there is ample amount of co2 on the planet mars and this much amount of oxygen can help an astronaut to breathe for 10 minutes but this is not the case guys in order to survive on the planet we should have oxygen for at least a week for at least one person so to produce oxygen what moxi will do it will separate the oxygen item from the co2 so co2 is this they will separate this oxygen from the carbon and what we will get is co plus o so this is what they are actually aspiring for it does so by using a heat at the temperature of around 800 degree celsius so this is the amount of heat is required in order to separate co2 into two different elements so at last this process also produces carbon monoxide as a waste product but on that planet where 96% of the composition of the atmosphere is co2 carbon monoxide will not be a pollutant moxi is only a test module so it is just a kind of a sample experiment we are not aspiring for 5 g of oxygen for that the future oxygen generator have to be 100 times larger to that of this one and they can actually support human missions to mars as well the substantial amount of oxygen supply to mars is essential why first for the crew members to survive on that planet and to act as a fuel oxidizer for coming back to earth so as we have discussed to burn hydrogen what we need is oxygen so when we carry hydrogen as a fuel in a spacecraft we require oxygen also take for example if we are carrying four astronaut and they want to take off from mars the future mission would require about 7 metric ton of rocket fuel and 25 metric ton of oxygen now you can imagine the amount of weight they will carry apart from their own equipments and experiments on the spacecraft so what we are doing as of now is to reduce the weight as much as possible the scientists believe that it would be an enormous challenge to hold 25 metric tons of oxygen from earth to mars in order to return back so in order to reduce that amount of weight over a spacecraft what we can do is we can produce the oxygen on the planet itself and this job could be done by using the liquid oxygen that can be produced on the planet itself and moxi is a game changer experiment that has showed a long term path for sustainable oxygen production over the red planet with this now we move on to the other article for the day the second article for the day is related to a recent earthquake which took place in the state of assam recently in the state of assam earthquake was observed and for many scientists this is a reminder of a seismic hazard along the hft fault line now what is its hft fault line and what is fault line actually and what are the basic earthquake which are generated by the fault line is part of this discussion well as far as this earthquake is concerned it was a primary earthquake and had its apex center at about 80 kilometers northeast of guwahati now what is an apex center apex center is the point over the surface of the earth 
it is over remember this so it is over the surface of the earth where actual earthquake waves are observed on the other hand the focal or the focus of the earthquake is the point interior of the earth it is inside the crust of the earth where actual displacement of rock takes place and this is the area where actual earthquake is generated then there are different kind of waves including the primary and the secondary waves they flow across the material and finally they reaches the earth surface and that place is known as epic center so this entire information was given by national center of seismology the magnitude of this earthquake was 6.4 on the richter scale now what is this richter scale it is a kind of a parameter or a measuring rod as far as earthquake is concerned so a richter scale of 5 and richter scale of 6 means that it is 10 times more than 5 every one point increase in the value means 10 times larger the impact of the earthquake as per the report there were six aftershocks or the after earthquake vibration of magnitude ranging 3.2 to 4.7 occurred in the 2 and a half hours following the main tremor all these events are located near the kopili fault closer to himalayan frontal thrust so this is what hft is about it's an abbreviation of himalayan frontal thrust now what is this frontal thrust the area is seismically very active falling in the highest seismic hazard zone 5 we will also discuss about the zone later on and the seismic hazard zone 5 is associated with the collisional tectonic where indian plate subducts beneath the eurasian plate so it is like this this was the indian plate this was the eurasian plate now this was moving in this direction and this was moving in this direction now what happened because eurasian was the larger plate and indian was a smaller plate and because of the different densities and the weight the indian plate went in the downward direction and what happened in the later case the indian plate went downward or beneath the eurasian plate so this is your indian plate and this is your eurasian plate and the position of their interaction is what we today have the himalayan range now what is a fault a fault is nothing but a fracture along which the blocks of crust on either side as you can see this side and this side have moved relative to one another parallel to the fracture this is similar this is what is actually happening in a crust now what we are observing this day is that the crust which is both divergent and convergent is either moving towards each other or moving away from each other entire earth crust is divided into different major and minor plates including the indian plate australian plate african atlantic pacific and many other there are smaller plates also but that is not the case of current or today's discussion the fault which is created is at combination of these plates sometimes they are also intra plate but as of now what we are seeing is the kind of earthquake which has taken place in this case was at a fault and this fault has actually been the case of convergence of different plates and those different plates were indian and the eurasian so when an earthquake occurs on one of these faults the rock on one side of the fault slips to respect to the other the fault surface can be vertical it can be horizontal or at some angle to the surface of the earth we will see this very soon the continuous tectonic stress stress is nothing but coming together or going again there is a kind of a stress which is generated because of that movement this stress keep building up and particularly along the fault line so if these are two crust and this is the fault line you are having so the stress will be generated on this fault line and in some time in future there might be an earthquake now this is the basic map of india i have changed the color scheme in order to match the black background here you can see there is bhutan this is your nepal this is your bangladesh and this entire region is your india now as you can see this entire chain is from the himalayan region the upper part is nothing but your tibetan plateau and the lower part is your himalayan range which is also making a syntaxical belt 
on the northeastern part. So this is the area where there is a bend in the Himalayan range and also it narrowed down on the eastern front. Now what we see is that the lower part of this Himalayan range is nothing but a fault. What is happening? The Indian plate which was moving in the northeast direction actually get submerged or converged at the Eurasian plate. So this is your Eurasian plate and this is your Indian plate. So the area between both this is nothing but a fault and the area is also very very prone to the earthquakes. So the kind of stress which is generated because of the convergence of these two plates is nothing but turning out to be havoc in the form of earthquakes. And the recent earthquake in the Assam is nothing but a form of that stress only. So the place which was in the news is this. This was the place which was in news. This is your Brahmaputra river. So this place is situated in the state of Assam, which is also a part of the given fault. Now in this map, you can see the different zones or the earthquake zones of India. The color scheme is different. The lightest color here shows the most vulnerable areas as far as earthquake is concerned. So as we have discussed previously, these areas which are at the convergence boundary of Eurasian and the Indian plate is part of your high probability or high risk zone of earthquake. So this entire Himalayan belt including the Nepal and Bhutan is part of high earthquake probability. On the other hand, on the other front, you can see that this area and in fact smaller these areas are also subjected to high earthquake. Now what is the reason? There is no Himalaya over here. Well, these are intra-plate earthquakes. These earthquakes are nothing but the release of energy at the plate boundary. Now this is nothing but a plate boundary of India. Alright, so this is also a plate boundary. The other boundary is this on the northern side. The southern boundary is here. So when a stress is generated in the Himalaya but that stress could not be released, that stress moves towards this direction and as this is a weak point, that stress releases in the form of an earthquake. And this is also the place where Bhuj earthquake took place. So the Bhuj is situated in the Kutch area of Gujarat. This map is very important for your mains perspective because UPSC has been asking questions related to the natural disaster and earthquake for many reasons is UPSC's favorite. So you should remember this map, you should have a basic idea about it. One more thing about this map is that the central part of India or in the northwestern and the central part of India is not very much prone to earthquake. Why? Well, the place of Rajasthan is one of the oldest part on this planet. Aravli here is one of the oldest surviving mountain chain in the world. Secondly, this or the Deccan part of India is also very stable as far as earthquake or seismic activity is concerned. It is well established because it is part of flood, lava or basalt. Hence, these are the places which receive the least amount of earthquake in India. Now, through this infograph, I want to convey the what kind of earthquake actually took place in the state of Assam. Assume that the upper portion in this photograph is nothing but the Himalayan region and the lower part is nothing but Brahmaputra valley. Now what has happened in the given case is that there was a focus point as I have discussed focus point is the point inside or beneath the earth crust where actual earthquake takes place. So there was an incident of divergence or the creation or the movement along the fault and this created different waves across the region and these waves are nothing but secondary and the primary waves which were generated at the focus. When these waves reach at the surface or at the surface of the crust at the epic center, they created or they were observed through a different instruments and we actually receive what is known as the earthquake. So we do not feel an earthquake at the focus, we feel it at the epic center. Now because of the movement of earth crust at the fault, what we have seen at the some portion of the land has subdued or has gone down. On the other hand, the some portion of the earth has gone up. So they can go down, they can go up or even they can go in a parallel direction. Well, these are nothing but a part of faults or the types of faults which we normally observe. So whenever this takes place, there is an earthquake and the fault in the Assam is very very prone to earthquake as well and the article is actually talking about that. In this GIF or in this GIF you can see that I have provided a anim small animation 
where you can see that uh, there is a fault taking place and the right portion of the earth is going downward and what we are having is that the lower portion is the hanging valley and the upper portion is the football. It is a part of a fault. It is one of the fault. It is also known as a normal fold. Apart from this, we also have different type of folds and these are as follows. The first one is the normal fault. It is also known as divergence because both the plates or both the part of the crust are moving away from each other. The second one is the reverse fault when they both are moving towards each other. In this case, there is upward movement. In the previous case, there is downward movement. And there is third case also when they just move parallel to each other and there is no upward or downward move. This is also known as strike slip fault. These are the three basic types of faults which are taking place and these faults actually lead to different kinds of land masses. Now let us see more about what faults are. When the earth crust bends, folding occurs. But when this cracks, faulting occurs. Now as I called you about a case when our blocks of land are moving towards each other, what will happen? A fold will take place. This is a kind of fold. So Himalayan range is a kind of fold mountains. But we are not concerned about the folds, we are concerned about the fault. So when does a fault take place? When there is a crack. So crack is required in order to create a kind of fault. A fault is a planar fracture or a crack in a volume of earth crust. So it always takes place in the crust. Across which there has been a significant displacement. So this is the keyword. There is a displacement as we have seen in last three previous cases. There is a displacement of the crust. So displacement of a block or blocks of the crust. The faulted edge or edges are usually very steep. As you can see in this case, the edge is very steep. This is the edge and it is very, very steep as you can see. Faults occur due to the tensile and compressive forces acting on the parts of the crust. So these are two forces which are responsible for the creation of faults. Large faults within the earth's crust result from the action of plate tectonic forces. So as I've discussed that because of this plate tectonics, there are two plate tectonics, Eurasian and the Indian and because of their movement towards each other convergence, there is a fault and that fault is causing the earthquakes. Well, these areas of convergence are also known as subduction zones or the transform or the transform faults. Energy released associated with the rapid movement on active faults is the cause of most earthquakes. So as I said, there is a release of energy and this energy released is based on the amount of stress which was accumulated over a period of time. In an active fault, the pieces of the earth crust along the fault move over time. So there's a movement upward, downward or parallel. Inactive faults have movement along them at one time but no longer they move. So once they have been through a movement and now they are inactive. So once in the past centuries ago, maybe millions of years ago, there was a movement in the crust but now or as of now, they are stable. The type of motion along a fault depends on the type of fault. So what kind of fault has been there? Normal, reverse or any other. It also defines the type of motion that will take place. Although we have many different landmass or a different kind of landforms which are created from the faults. But just to keep it under the perspective of general studies, we will discuss two different landforms as far as faults are concerned. So when a fault takes place or a large amount of fault or a larger area is under the fault creation or destruction we have two different kind of land masses first being the rift valley system and the second is the block movement now what is rift valley system it is nothing but a tension causes the central portion to let down between two adjacent fault blocks forming a graben or a rift valley which will have steep walls assume this this is a small crustal area and there are two different cracks. Now what happened that these two masses or A or B portion remains at their position whereas the C goes down. Now what will happen? As a consequence of this, we will have this kind of landscape or the land surface. The middle portion which went down is nothing but the rift valley and these are very sharp edges on either side. Rift valley are well known from the rivers which flow through these rift valley. 
the east african rift valley system is the best example of rift valley now what i want is that all those viewers who are watching this please comment in the comment box just one example of rift valley available or present in india i'm just giving you some hints these are very very well defined in central part of india well this was the best hint i can give you please comment in the comment box if you know any of them in general large scale block mountain and rift valleys are due to the tension rather than the compression so large amount of block mountains and the rift valleys are created from tension rather than the compression the second geological or the landscape which we see out of the result of a fault is the block mountain in the above example you can see the portion which is known as a and the b are nothing but the block mountains well these are mostly seen in either side of your rift valley block mountains may originate when the middle block move downward well in both the cases the middle portion was moving downward and become a rift valley while the surmounting blocks stand higher as the block mountains so again i will say when you discuss or when you put up your answer in the comment box regarding an example of a rift valley in india also tell me the example of block mountain in india again the hint will remain the same it is situated somewhere in the central india so that's all guys for today these were the two important articles which we could find out as far as upsc preparation is concerned many of the articles in today's newspaper or in the last week of the explained section have been covering the medical emergency which is going on in india and most of the articles were related to the covid and its process and fight against the covid so we have already covered those articles in our dns initiative in one day or the other so you can go through those articles multiple times they have already been discussed so we have avoided repeating them in the explained discussion thank you very much for participating in this discussion and lending your precious time and attention in this please take care yourself please stay safe work hard work smart bye for now